So, uh, we're going to talk about the status of the CPs. These are also being reported, right? What? These are also being reported, right? Yeah. Uh, so, three types of status conditional, unconditional, and dispositional. So, I want you to take me through them and tell me what all of them means. Conditional means that you can like pick uh, any position regardless of whether there's offense or not. Unconditional means that you'll stick with that position until the end. I think like the exception is if you go for theory, like if you really can't find a theory that you say the can't find is unconditional, you can still go for theory. And dispo like varies, like you have to ask them what dispo means. So what does it vary with? Well, it's, it depends on the, in their interpretation of what dispo is. Like, the normal di dispo, like, the uh, one of the most common ones I've heard is that uh, I can I can kick, uh, uh, I can kick, like, add, wait, what is the common one? Uh, the way I've heard it most commonly is that if you put defense, I reserve the right to extend and concede your defense, and I can't kick if it's straight turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, have like you heard right. any other interpretation of it? Because I haven't. Uh, I, I don't know. People, like, I, I've uh, heard of people, like, if they don't ask them what dispo means, they just assume they get away with some shady, like, inter it's like, oh, uh, uh, like, I can still kick it if it's straight ref, but on only, like, if I run, like, less than two counterpunch or some, so something like that. Like, if you don't ask them for it, they can, like, uh, get away with what dispo means. Okay. So let's talk about what each of these things, um, well, first off, which is probably the most fair? Unconditional. Right. Which is probably the most educational? Uh, that, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure. I, I think there's arguments to be made for each one. Good. So the fairness debate seems to be pretty clear, that unconditional is the most fair. Right. Right. It also seems like dispositional is fair, is pretty fair. Sure. Like, in general, the way we conceive of arguments is as dispositional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like most arguments in debate, if you read a framework, you're not expected to go for the framework no matter what. Right. You have the right to go for the framework, uh -huh. which means you have the right to concede their defense as well. Uh -huh. The strategy of the affirmative conceding to the negative's framework and going for turns on the MC is essentially the same as a dispositional strategy. Sure. Make sense? Yeah. You're basically kicking an advocacy that you put forth in favor of a different advocacy. Right. Now, I agree. I think the education debate's interesting. There are arguments to be made for why conditionality is an educational practice um, because it forces, A, because it's real world, B, because it forces more critical thinking, uh, C, because it forces more research, um, D because it forces more strategic decision making. I don't uh, think research. I, I I don't think research is necessarily true. I think there's more research with unconditional position because you have to you know you have to like defend it so much, which incentivizes yourself to research. And then the argument that you're going to make is like, oh, I can run multiple positions, but that's solved by unconditionality because you can read the positions too. So I don't think research is that persuasive an argument. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I'm glad that you're thinking deeply about it because. Um, it probably is not the greatest argument, but it's definitely an argument I've heard for conditionality. Um, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense to me, and I tend to buy it, um, but we should definitely be aware that this argument is there for conditionality. Sure. Um, then, on like to justify conditionality, people will read like on the fairness debate uh, against conditionality, right? Um, so like AT condo is unfair. People will read arguments like one, infinite AF prep time solves back, right? Um, People don't usually have offense on conditionality. No, but they make a bunch of really bad defensive arguments, and they make them all like super blippy. So let's create a list of it so you can feel comfortable just like dealing with that uh, dump and responding. So one is infinite prep time solves back. Wait, let me just write this. So another argument I can think of is affirming is too easy. We need a counterbalancing mechanism. Um, a 
third argument I can think of is AF gets to choose the plan. This is a unique advantage to affirming. Uh, can you think of other arguments why unconditionality is not fair? Or sorry, conditionality is not fair. say that uh, one error gets to like introduce new layers and procedures that we're not going to see That argument is a classic example of begging the question. Right? Just because I get to up layer doesn't mean you get to read conditionality. Oh, that's what begging the question means. I thought begging the question. Well, like, so what, what is begging the question? Like, like it that, begs, the response I've made. this argument begs the question for why you get to be conditional. Yeah, I think that's it too. Um, so let's go to AT condo is uneducational. So one is turn increases critical thinking because it forces you to choose between several contradictory layers and to think about how they all interact. Um, second is turn condo is real world. This is how policy making happens in real life. Yeah. So it mimics real world processes a lot more. And there's various educational arguments there to be made. Um, third is that all the defense, like link defense against the clash, uh, this ad, right? Like the reason people say condo is uneducational is because it kills clash. Right. Because so Right, exactly. Um, exactly. Oh, also your uh, your research argument that you can research on multiple positions with conditionality. Yeah, that like condo encourages people to research multiple CPs as opposed to deeply frontlining one CP. I think I don't think you should say that second part because second part is still like sounds like con CP. yeah conceding that there will be deep frontlining yeah. of a CP. Um, yeah, probably true. Um, Cool. So the other thing we should definitely do is go through some policy theory back files uh, and pull out the relevant arguments here. Um, yeah, well, we can do that. There should already be a back file that we have. Um, the other argument that we're missing that policy debaters make a lot is about literature checks. Like the literature flows one way or the other, and that means that conditionality is like okay. Okay, well, we can come back to that later. Yeah. Let's talk about dispositionality. So, what are some reasons dispositionality is unfair? Yeah, I think it would be strategy. Either time skew or strategy that if I 
I don't understand what you mean by if I invest a lot into two positions. Well, like, uh, okay, like the one arrow splits equal time to uh, two of the twenty to say two, 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 two claps on one, and then you have to respond to the other. Well, that begs the question of why I get to collapse on. I only get to collapse on one if you put defense on both of them. Um, but people don't usually straight train. Like, well, what would happen if you straight train both two two? You have to go for the other one. Well, you'd at least have to defend the like the turns against both of them. In the sense that the 2AR could weigh the turns against the CPU didn't go for against the CPU did go for. It would be like if you read two impacts and both impacts were turned and you conceded the turns on one of the impacts and just argued that the impact you're going for outweighs the turn. So you'd have to go for one of the CPs and argue that that CP outweighs the other CP which is being turned. Makes sense? Uh... Okay, so I, the argument I have written down for why uh, like AT's dispose unfair um, is, uh, or sorry, why, reasons why dispo is unfair is that um, the affirmative is encouraged to not make defensive arguments. Wait, what? So a reason why dispositionality could be unfair is that the AF is encouraged to not make defensive arguments, which reduces clash. Uh, a debate we should watch, we will watch, is Chris Kim versus Ron Prasad mm -hmm. at quarters of TSC last year mm -hmm. um, in 2014. I think Ron read Dispo bad. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then we should have, uh, can you think of other reasons why Dispo is unfair? Mm -hmm. Not just uneducational. Or uneducational. That's fine. Uh, so let's talk about the bigger picture here in terms of why this debate is really important for us to have right now. Uh, first thing is you absolutely have to ask your opponent for the status of the CP or the KL. You won't believe how even debaters in really important debates will not do that. Like Jackson did not ask uh, Graham in quarters of TOC what the status of his CP was. It drove me up the wall. Um, I just couldn't believe it. Like, we're in quarters of the TOC and you're not asking for the status of the CP. Like, you gotta ask. Okay? That needs to be etched into your brain. That's the first question in CX. And also on K alts, you have to make sure the K is unconditional. PV Peninsula did it a lot where they read the K as unconditional, or as conditional. Why do you have to make sure it's unconditional? No, they read it as conditional. And uh, if they were asked, then they would say it's uncondo. Right? Um, the other thing is, you have to be ready for debaters reading bi-directional interps here. Like, Rom needed to get a uh, theory violation off of Chris in quarters of TOC. And so he asked Chris the status of the CP. Chris said dispo. Rom read theory on that. Well, you can't really get out of like... One way I've seen people get out of it is Varun. Varun said, status of the CP is whatever you want it to be. Oh. Which is smart. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. um, and he would say that explicitly in the NC. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another theory you shall have seen on the status debates is that the status needs to be explicitly mentioned in the one end. Because the advantage is it prevents squirreliness. Okay. 
It's also said to be better for judge norms because some judges presume that the status is unconditional. Some judges presume that the status is conditional. I, I think there, you can't really generate authors. I think the only way you can do that is actually to generate What is? In, in terms of what? That introducing between one and one. Yeah, I think that's probably a different true argument. I, I would think you can generate, except for like, you need to maintain the strategy. You really want to show people. But it's not, I mean, it's not. Right, that doesn't sound persuasive. Um, I think that, yeah, I think that's a good shot. Yeah, because the only way, I think the only way they can win is to have reason. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to read that show, you wouldn't ask for the status, or like, well, in CX, like, did you, did you, uh, uh, did you mention your status in the comments? Like, well, the, I wouldn't even ask. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would just say explicitly no status of the CP was given. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, there's an argument to be made that it would be better for uh, preventing judge intervention for the status to be in the actual uh, CP text itself. Because like some judges, like Chris Tice, tend to think that the status of the CP, if uh, if it's not explicitly mentioned, is unconditional. Well, I don't understand why that would be judge intervention. Because it would put the position, it would put both debaters in the position where they don't know what their judge thinks in terms of what the presumed status is. Uh, and then the neg makes arguments in the 2 and R why the presumed status is unconditional. Uh, right? Like, if the 2 and R goes for, you didn't ask for status, it's unconditional, or it's conditional, drop it. Right? But the judge says that in a world where they don't ask for status, I presume it's unconditional. The 2 and R is in a shit ton of, like, just trouble there. Yeah. Okay. Right? Because presumably the way it wor the, usually the way it works is that the one AR forgets to ask and the two AR kicks the CP. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if the judge says that I don't let you kick the CP because I believe that it is the case that you have to defend it, then you can't do that anymore. Right. Oh, that's pretty bad for the two AR. Yeah. Okay, so is the status clear? Yeah. Okay, importance of it understood? Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. Okay.